Hello everyone, my name is John Edelman. Uh, I've most recently been the CEO of Design Within Reach, which I did for the last decade. And prior to that, I was the CEO uh, and owner of Edelman Leather. Uh, I am currently a consultant to the design community and on numerous uh, design community boards of directors and advisory committees. Uh, some of the examples are New York City by Design, Design Leadership Network, DIFA, and of course, Be Original Americas. So today, I'm working with Design Milk to answer some of the questions, so I'm gonna interview myself. Before I get started, I just wanna say how terrible I feel for our community and the whole world at the moment. Uh, I think we all have something in common, possibly for the first time ever. Uh, we're all sheltered, we're all staying home, uh, and it's certainly not easy. To all of you trying to do business, I wish you the best, best, best of luck, and uh, I'm sure it'll work out. So, with that said, I have some questions that I've been asked to respond to. The first question, how might we be rethinking retail post-COVID? It's an interesting question, but I think we were rethinking retail pre-COVID. And I think anybody who wasn't rethinking every aspect of how they did their business before this horrible pandemic hit uh, has to start now, and it's a bit late. I think people were generally in the restructuring phase before looking for new ways to acquire clients, looking for new ways to market their products. The digital revolution is here. It's not happening. It's now just the way things are. Uh, so I think you have to think about who's going to make it through COVID and then think about why they made it through and what they need to work on. Sex question. People still need to buy stuff. How can small and medium-sized businesses turn things around? What about larger retailers? Listen, I don't think the question is about turning things around. I think the question is about getting things started again. Uh, I think luxury uh, really does rely more on a brick and mortar base. Uh, I think it's, I think it's, everybody currently is in almost the same boat. It's brutal to do business at the moment. Uh, uh, it's hard to show, it's hard to market, it's hard to get people to spend money in the mo at the moment when they're unemployed. So I think getting your business started and keeping it moving uh, is the most important thing. And I think when you, uh, to, the turnaround comes next. Let's start getting ourselves back into business. Next question, is there any coming back from this? And if so, who will be leading the pack and why? And that relates to the first question. If you're already going digital prior, if you're already, already uh, in the midst of digital marketing prior, and if you were in good conditions prior to this, you're gonna come back first. Of course we're gonna come back. I think things are just gonna transition. I think this long-term trend of urbanization is gonna shift. People are gonna be moving to the suburbs. I think it's a whole different uh, game once they get there. The homes will be bigger. Uh, they'll need to furnish them. Uh, they're gonna shop differently than before. They're gonna drive places versus taking the subway. Uh, we'll see what happens, but um, it's, it's definitely gonna come back, but it's gonna come back uh, with a distorted mirror image of today's uh, structure. What about manufacturers? Is there a difference between manufacturer retailers and multi-brand retailers? Sure, manufacturer retailers uh, either have their own brand or sell kind of white label things under their own name. Inherently, if you own a factory or you manufacture in factories and sell your own product, you have a higher gross margin. If you resell other people's goods, uh, especially if you don't have exclusivity, there's a lower margin and a higher uh, competitive nature of the business. I think it's always healthier to have a, a mix, but to be pro uh, proportionally heavy towards making your own product. It's the only way I think coming out of this to have the margins to survive. And I thought that prior to the COVID, I think it post COVID. So that's the main difference is manufacturer retailers are more profitable. Uh, and I think that's the way to go going forward. Do we still need brick and mortar stores? Yes, we still need brick and mortar stores. Uh, I think they're gonna change. I think you have to offer more. I think, you know, when you used to compete against other brick and mortar, you compete against digital. I think there's no separation today between digital and brick and mortar. I think they're one and the same. In fact, many people are using brick and mortar to, uh, uh, to, for client acquisition and getting more clients to go to the website. I think one doesn't operate as well without the other and you see classic uh, e-commerce realtors uh, open up brick and mortar stores uh, and they were doing that pretty heavily prior to this pandemic. So 
we'll see. Retail's not going away. We need brick and mortar, but I think we never need brick and mortar alone. I think you have to combine it with digital or you really can't survive. As they say, if you don't exist in the first page of Google, you probably don't exist. If you're not making it easier for your clients to buy things how they want, whether it's on the online, by phone, in person, however they want at the moment, um, then you're not keeping up to just today's basic needs of the consumer. Will authentic and original design come out of this better shape? With, will knockoffs decrease? And will this be temporary? I think post this crisis, uh, authenticity will mean even more. I think people are going to take stock of what they have in their lives. I think they're going to throw out junk. And the definition of junk probably will be knockoff product. I think people are reassessing most parts of their lives. And I think the originality uh, of product and design, authenticity, will be more important than ever. Uh, I am a, on the board of, of uh, Be Original Americas. We fight to keep the designers alive, keep the manufacturers alive, and fight knockoffs. And I think the consumer today, especially when they can go back out into the real world, will fight for authenticity. Uh, you know, so if you... If you have a chance to support Be Original Americas, if there's any way for you to join if you're not a member, support Be Original Americas. We, we educate the world and the design community about the value of authenticity and the future of design. Thank you for your time and uh, hope to see you soon.